Hey, good day there. In this video, we're going to be taking a microcontroller, a temperature sensor, and powering it up outside to record some data in real time. We'll also be logging that data on board the microcontroller to download for later use. So without further ado, let's get started. For this project, I'll be using an ESP32 as our microcontroller, that way we can transmit the data wirelessly. And for our temperature sensor, I'll be using a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. To get started, I'm going to wire the temperature sensor on the 3 volt rail, and I'll be using pin 4 as my data pin. Once wired, we'll need to select a power source, and you'll want to pick a power bank that supports through charging, meaning it can both charge and pass current through at the same time. And speaking of charging, I'll be using a 5 volt 2.5 watt solar panel to charge up the battery bank. At 2.5 watts, I'm not worried about overcurrent, not to mention that the charge controller on the power bank will draw whatever current the batteries need. Voltage is a little bit of a different story. As we can see with the solar panel, the voltage will actually peak a little higher than what it's rated for, and I've seen it go as high as 6. Originally, my plan was just to use a linear voltage regulator since I had one laying around, but the dropout ended up being too much. And this was confirmed by checking the current draw, which despite the charge light turning on, it looked like it was the only thing that was turning on. When I gave it the full 5.5 volts, we could see that it was drawing in the hundreds of milliamps, which is what I expect it to draw when the batteries are actually charging. And although it seems to tolerate a slight increase in the short term, we still want to control the voltage to our batteries for obvious reasons. For this, I switched to a buck converter, which is a lot more efficient than a linear voltage regulator for controlling our voltage. Here we can see that despite being in full sunlight, we're able to actually regulate our voltage to exactly 5 volts. Finally, I double checked our solar setup by making sure we're drawing an appropriate amount of current, and here we can see that the batteries are actually charging. Now that I'm happy with our voltage regulation, I cut open a micro USB cable and looked for the positive and negative wires. I matched those wires to our buck converter and soldered it on board. I then plugged the power in to our power bank and the power out to our microcontroller. Finally, I designed a makeshift case and placed the components inside just to give a little bit of protection. Taking it outside, I placed the solar panel in full sun, and although the case is ventilated, I still place the components in the shade just to keep both the sensor and the battery from heating under full sun. Software-wise, there's two ways we can configure the setup. One such way is as an access point, where the ESP32 generates its own Wi-Fi network, which we can connect to, and then head over to a web page on the default gateway, which will display our data in real time. We can also change the log interval, which it'll save the data onto onboard memory, of which we can download in a CSV format anytime we want off the network. The next way we can configure our setup is as a station, where the ESP32 connects to a local network that we also connect to and access a web page on the ESP32's IP4 address. This has the added upside of drawing less power, as it's not constantly transmitting its own Wi-Fi network, and with the internet, we can use external servers to sync our time and date automatically, instead of relying on the ESP32's internal clock. For super power savings, you could even use the internet to do batch uploads to something like a Google Sheets, where it only wakes up, say, every hour from a deeper sleep to transmit all its saved data in bulk, before returning to a less power demanding Wi-Fi free state, further saving on power, but since I want to check the data in real time, I didn't go for that route. Note that means if you're following along with the example code, you'll have to update the network information with your own. You'll also need to take note of the IP4 address and make sure that 1. It follows the style, yours might start with 192 and not 10, and you'll also need to make sure that it's actually available on the network, otherwise the ESP32 can't connect. Here we can see I actually ended up having to change mine from ending in 50 to 51 since the other IP4 address was already taken. But now as we can see, not only do we have our data in real time, but the current date and time has been synced up, and now we can download our CSV file and see that the current date and time also shows up on our spreadsheet. In all, we were able to power our microcontroller and temperature sensor with the solar setup, and not only display that data in real time, but also log the data for future use. And with that said, thank you for watching. 